session entitled LNG for Shipping Risks and Opportunities. I wish to welcome you all. Uh, I'm going to, my name is Erdem Erginel, as you can see from the screen, I work at the Directorate General for Mobility and Transport of the European Commission. I work in the unit uh, that deals with maritime transport. Um, and um, sustainable shipping is one of the issues that I deal with, among others, and uh, it's in, the, in that capacity that I will be uh, attempting to uh, moderate and uh, introduce this session. Um, so the way I, I would like to uh, pr uh, proceed is that I would like to, to give you some information as to what the European Commission does uh, in this respect. And then we have um, uh, distinguished speakers uh, uh, among us uh, today. Um, and I will be passing uh, the floor to them. And uh, hopefully we will be um, having a fruitful discussion afterwards. So very quickly, and in, a, in a view, bearing in mind the time constraint that we have, I'd like to give you some information as to the position of European Commission regarding LNG. The European Commission supports the use of LNG as a fuel for shipping, as an attractive alternative for conventional shipping fuels. Since uh, 2009, uh, the EU has taken initiatives to promote the development of LNG infrastructures and facilitate support measures. Under the 10T framework, uh, LNG shipping projects in Europe have been financed with approximately 500 million euros. And we expect that under a new call, uh, more such projects will, will receive funding. Um, the Commission is actually currently funding a study on the completion of an EU framework on LNG fuel ships and its relevant fuel provision infrastructure. Long title and a big study indeed. It is composed of four lots um, that w uh, work on a, a variety of issues and uh, my colleague will later talk about uh, a part of, of the findings of, the, of that study. But um, in this context, apart, apart from the assessment of the risks and opportunities, regarding storage, provision, and use of LNG as marine fuel, uh, we are looking into the legal, procedural, and technological gap analysis on LNG distribution, bunkering, and use, as well as an analysis of LNG market development and financing opportunities. In general, the Commission encourages a public debate on LNG for shipping, and the study provides arguments for a stakeholder debate at local, national, and European levels. The first reactions we have had so far is that the stakeholders recognize the environmental advantages of uh, LNG as a shipping fuel, but there seems to be some uncertainties regarding whether there is a clear business case or not. The final results of the study are expected in the second half of this year. So uh, we are looking forward to your reactions uh, uh, one, once uh, the publication uh, uh, is done. Um, we take account of the overall EU policy, which aims to reduce emissions from shipping and considers alternative energy sources. Uh, in view of, of the growing constraints on the use of heavy fuels. Um, to give you some examples on what kind of, of, of framework uh, the European Commission actually uh, is um, uh, shaping its policies in, with, within, we have the EU white paper on transport, which set, sets the greenhouse gas reduction goal for at least 40% by 2015 for the shipping sector and requires that shipping should further contribute to the reduction of local and global emissions. The director, we also have a, director, a directive on sulfur content in marine fuels, which allows the use of LNG as an alternative fuel to comply with more restrictive emission standards set by MARPOL Annex 6. 
Last but not least, we have the directive on the deployment of alternative fuels infrastructure, which contains new rules that ensure minimum coverage of LNG refueling points in Maine, maritime and inland ports across Europe by 2025 and 2030 respectively, with common standards for their design and use. Um, the Commission assists the member states and the industry to fulfill new stricter requirements regarding uh, air emissions from the maritime transport sector. In 2013, the Commission initiated an open dialogue with the relevant maritime industry stakeholders and member states to better address the environmental sustainability challenges confronting the EU maritime sector through the European Sustainable Shipping Forum, the ESSF. The ESSF has provided guidance uh, to the contractors of, of the, the study that I mentioned in the execution of their work. Um, just to give you a brief summary, which may feed later into our discussion, uh, the preliminary results of the study uh, point out to the following advantages and disadvantages of the use of LNG as a shipping fuel. The major motivation for stakeholders to engage in LNG as a shipping fuel is to be compliant with stricter requirements regarding sulfur emissions and the emission control areas, and the related positive environmental effects, namely the reduction of the emissions of harmful substances, sulfur, nitrogen oxide, carbon dioxide, and so on. Then the most critical issues for further deployment are the financing of LNG as a fuel and the pricing of LNG itself. For many companies, and especially shipping companies, LNG does not offer a profitable business model yet. The higher equipment costs for engines and tanks are not offset by savings in fuel or operating expenses. Also, the lack of existing bunkering infrastructure for LNG is another important barrier. So, having given this background, um, we come back to this workshop. The workshop is one of the events organized in the context of the EU-wide awareness campaign supported by the Commission in the context of the study that I just mentioned. We have three more events coming up in Amsterdam, Hamburg and Brussels. In the context of our awareness raising initiatives, a new website, a new website has just been launched. It's entitled uh, www.lngforshipping.eu. In this website, you can find information material on LNG as a shipping fuel. Um, in this context, uh, and in the, in the context of using uh, the internet and uh, the social media, I would also urge you to follow the, uh, my director general's um, Twitter uh, account, transport underscore EU. Uh, we regularly update uh, on issues including maritime and LNG matters. Today, in this uh, workshop, and how do I go to the next? Yes, here we go. Um, uh, today, we would like to present you with some of the preliminary uh, findings of a survey on the perception of the risks and opportunities of LNG as a shipping fuel. Uh, yeah. So my colleague, uh, Mr. Wills uh, of PricewaterhouseCoopers, will be uh, talking about this. The aim uh, over here is to gain an overview of the opportunities and remaining challenges for the use of LNG uh, for shipping. Uh, in this context, this will be explained more clearly, a survey among private businesses, government authorities, and NGOs has been conducted. The second presentation, as you can see from, uh, from the slide, uh, is entitled LNG, uh, the shipping fuel of the future. And it will be delivered by Mr. Richard Gilmore, uh, the director of the gas fleet of Maran Gas Maritime uh, Incorporated. Then uh, Mr. Uh, Mario Dogliani, uh, the head of project financing of RENA Services, uh, will speak about the 10T project Costa. And this will be followed uh, by the presentation of Dr. Zaharyadakis, okay, 
pronunciation didn't go that well. <laughs> Zachary Yudakis, apologies for that. The director of the ocean finance on the, of, 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 of Poseidon uh, Med, uh, uh, where he will be speaking about the LNG bunkering project for the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. And then we will have the discussion session. Uh, I will not talk any uh, longer. Um, I hope you will enjoy and benefit from this workshop. Thank you. insights of our recent stakeholder analysis as an integral part of our awareness campaign. As we have already just uh, heard from uh, Mr. Ergino, um, we have been mandated, we being us, PWC, DNVGL and NSL group, um, to conduct, or let's say to muscle this very big uh, project. Our, our collaboration brings together the necessary experience, credibility, and communications excellence to achieve uh, the sort of objectives. The overall objective of our campaign, being part of this uh, grand long named study, is to promote, uh, promote LNG as an alternative marine fuel. We try to accomplish this by the provision of objective information about the barriers and opportunities of LNG as a fuel source and by especially initiating the discussion on these fundamentals with all relevant stakeholders. This, uh, the discussion of the barriers, uh, opportunities and barriers with the relevant uh, stakeholders um, is not only particularly important to spread this information, but also to truly understand how their attitude is towards LNG as a fuel. We have therefore conducted personal interviews with 52 leading stakeholders all across um, the, in the, uh, the, the industry, as you can see, um, um, in order to aggregate the overall understanding of the barriers and opportunities over the last few months. The most important points being, um, as I only have a very limited time and I could probably speak more than an hour about this, um, I will present to you now. Most importantly for our discussion, we sought a balanced basis. So we went forth to really try to see um, about discussion, discussing not only the opportunities, but all the barriers as well, especially the barriers as, as, as for that. We therefore aim to see which opportunities, opportunities can actually be leveraged and which barriers must be overcome to increase the availability of bunkering facilities and the adoption rate of ship owners. Ultimately, we try to achieve an increased use of LNG as a shipping fuel. As a very positive first insight, we actually saw that the grand majority of uh, participants have a very detailed knowledge about this topic. As you can see, in general, more than 80% uh, actually have a very detailed knowledge. But you can see as, as, as soon as you come into the regulatory and economic aspects, um, this amount becomes smaller. So it's really uh, important to, to go into details on this and see which information we actually really have to uh, be providing. Also, interestingly, you can see that 57%, uh, so actually more than half, of the organizations are very supportive. So we have the differentiation between supportive and very supportive of LNG as shipping fuel. Concerning the opportunities, I think it is fair to say that um, every participant we talk to in some way understands or agrees, in fact, that LNG is the cleaner alternative to heavy fuel oils. 
This is also reflected by the top column, where you can see that there's ha hardly any doubt that it is the, a cleaner alternative. Our ana analysis also shows that there is a differentiated opinion towards energy sourcing flexibility resulting from the use of LNG, which you can see at the bottom. On the one side, chip owners, for example, argue that they will still be largely dependent on heavy fuel oils, as they will, even when using LNG, as uh, they would be using, for example, dual fuel engines. On the other hand, we have ports, for example, who are very um, interested um, and, and, uh, and actually are trying to uh, offer a broader range of fuel sources. Looking a bit more into detail on the economic benefits, um, there is agreement in general, as we can see here, that there are positive economic benefits uh, expected to result out of uh, the adoption of LNG uh, as a fuel. Many uh, participants, however, argue that this is largely confined to emission control areas, the so-called, let's call them ECAs. LNG will, for example, pose a viable fuel alternative in ECAs compared to other more expensive low-sulfur fuel, uh, fossil fuel oils and diesels, which would have to be used to comply with regulation. Through the increased demand of LNG in ECAs as a viable alternative, there will naturally also be a growing business opportunity for new bunkering infrastructure. There is less agreement on the adoption of LNG as existing uh, as creating excess of supply um, and job creation. For example, in terms of job creation, many argue that the existing capacities now being in heavy fuel oils will uh, just be um, substituted into LNG. When we look at the, when we discuss and look at the barriers, we can see that the barrier of uncertain financial situation um, of the, let's call it the LNG business case, is the biggest barrier for all participants and agreed upon. Next to this, there's also a strong agreement that inadequate standards and regulation do provide a significant barrier. This is particularly attributed to the lack of international harmonization of standards as well as the novelty of LNG to permitting uh, authorities. There is although some optimism that the new IMO gas as fuel code will substantially help um, in this respect. Insufficient safety and security is less seen as a barrier, as well as negative perception. It is, I'll actually jump forth one quickly. It is actually very important to note on negative perception after having talked as well to many uh, interest groups um, and, and NGOs, for example, that there is a strong case um, against LNG for the fact that it still is a fossil fuel. Um, and they would, however, prefer to see all these investments being done into renewable fuel sources. They do, however, agree in general as well that it is a, be a better uh, alternative to the heavy fuel oils um, and uh, a viable transitionary option. Um, exactly the uncertain financial situation. So this is, we've uh, been having, as uh, well as uh, Mr. Ertinel also mentioned, this is the, the, the strongest problem we see, the, the lack of a positive business case. Um, our further analysis and discussion shows that actually this is dependent on, uh, on clarity of the pricing scheme of LNG. Now it's still indexed uh, uh, to oil and there are mainly long-term contracts being negotiated, the spot market is just uh, only developing, there's volatility of LNG pricing, there's unclarity of taxation and legislation about the use of LNG also in, different, in the different countries, and this general competitiveness with other low uh, sulfur, sulfur fuel, uh, fuels such as um, MGOs uh, make it very difficult obviously to calculate a, a positive business case. We do, however, see the first positive business cases um, being calculated 
However, it's important to note that these are mainly in the emission control area zones. Um, these also interestingly uh, uh, entail that there has been a close partnering between gas suppliers, ship owners and ports. Many of the ship owners, for example, also argue that there is pretty much no um, option of a possible of, of a positive business case outside the acres in the short to medium run. Now I'm going to fast forward a bit because we have little time. Um, we can see that there is a lot of involvement and activities, and that there is a very substantial confidence in the adoption of LNG, so I think people are slowly getting into the, into the motion that this will actually be happening. Um, exactly, the main conclusions. What do we draw out of this uh, discussion we had with the stakeholders? As we have mentioned many times now, it's really to inform about how to create a business case for LNG. Um, it's about to inform about initiatives towards the EU-wide harmonization of standards and regulations, for example, now by um, the adoption of the IMO uh, gas as fuel code, um, and to inform about uh, creative, successful regional partnerships, as we've seen some of the business cases in the, in the Nordic countries rely a lot on um, partnering between different uh, stakeholders to overcome the so-called chicken and egg problem there's no infrastructure, so we won't invest into uh, the necessary ships. Um, and as a maybe not as important, but still always very important in the shipping industry, to inform about the level of safety when handling LNG as fuel. We will try to spread this message and to really create a, a panel for discussion, also through a website which uh, Mr. Arianel has uh, mentioned. I have distributed some um, flyers as well, and there's information, as I said, on the website. As you can see, we have three more events planned in Hamburg, Brussels, and Amsterdam, which you're all, and if you would like to spread the news, uh, very much invited to come. Um, we are about to launch a video, um, really trying to explain as well the um, opportunities and barriers. And finally, it's among you, please, to also spread uh, the news to, to really participate and to get the discussion going. Um, um, we would be very thankful for this. Um, finally, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Um, I will hand out some uh, feedbacks, which I please ask you to fill in. And we have just circulated the, the, the email uh, slip so we can send you the presentations. If you, however, didn't get this, we would very much uh, thank you to put your business card in a little basket over there where there's a sign, um, and that would be all. Thank you.